Hi guys, this is Kushbu and welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. In this video, we'll go through the question longest increasing path in a matrix. Given an m cross n integer matrix, return the length of longest increasing path in that matrix. From each cell, you can either move in four direction that is left, right, up or down. You may not move diagonally or outside the boundary that is wrap around is not allowed. So over here in the first example, if you see the path 1, 2, 6, 9 is strictly increasing path which is of length 4 and so the output is 4. Similarly, in the second example, the path starts from 3 and goes towards 6 which is again of length 4 and so that is our answer. So over here, as you can see that the path can start at any point within this matrix and so we need to take that particular point into consideration while solving this problem. The constraints given over here are that the length m and n would be between 1 and 200 and your values would range from 0 to 2 raised to 31 minus 1. So now let's go ahead and see how we can solve this particular problem. Looking at this at first glance, it seems to be a DFS as we need to go in all the directions from a particular point. But how that DFS is going to work, let's go and see that in detail. Taking the same example that is given to us in the question, here is the path that is the longest increasing path that can be found for this matrix. So now the most important steps that we need to follow are the first one is we need to find the longest increasing path from each and every point because any of these points can be the starting point for your longest increasing path for example over here the starting point is this one and so we need to iterate and find the longest path from each and every index of this matrix the second thing is the directions. We can only move in four directions, which is up, down, left and right. We cannot move in the diagonal directions. The third thing is the condition that we need to check. That is, the next element on which we are trying to go should have a value greater than the current element. That is, your matrix of new x and new y would be greater than matrix of x and y. And the last thing is that at each iteration, we would also update the longest increasing path. That is, from this position, for example, I'll get a longest increasing path of 1. Because from 9, I cannot go anywhere. So that would be my longest increasing path at this particular moment. From this 9, my longest increasing path would be again length 1. Because from 9, I cannot go in any direction. From 4, my longest increasing path would become of length 2 because I can either go in 9 or in this direction towards 8. And so over here, my longest path would increase to 2 from 1. So these were the four steps that we need to follow. There is one more point, a fifth point that we'll see when we are coding it out. So first, let us go through the brute force and fail to see how and where we are failing and then we'll try to optimize our solution, which would be our fifth point. So let's go ahead and code it out. So initially, we'll check for the null conditions. That is, if my matrix is null or if it is of length 0, I can simply return 0. If that is not the case, I need to traverse through the matrix and call my DFS at each point. So for that, let's take integer m and n handy. With this, we'll also take an integer that would be longest path and initially that would be 0. Now I need to traverse through this matrix. So over here, I'll be going through this matrix and I'll be calling my DFS function. So my DFS function will take my matrix, my M, my N and my current position. That would be IJ. And this would return the path. That is 
the length of the current path with starting point as i and j after i am getting this my longest path would become the maximum of path and longest path and finally i need to return the longest path now let's go ahead and write the function dfs so that would give me an integer in this function i need to go into all the four directions and check whether my condition is being satisfied or not so for that we'll take a directions array this direction array would be nothing but all the four directions that is down up right and left in here i am taking a variable max which is starting with 0 and i'll iterate for all the directions so i'll take a for loop and let's take x and y so my new x would become i plus d of 0 and my y would become j plus d of 1 so this gives me my new direction or my new x and y now i need to check my conditions whether x and y are inside the boundaries of my matrix and whether my new x y is greater than my current position or not so this is whether my x and y are in bounds and whether my new xy is greater than the matrix of i and j if that is the case i'll go into that direction and call my dfs so this time my dfs would be called on matrix m n and x and y instead of i and j this would return a length and my max would need to contain the maximum of the value returned from this and the max that is already present so that would be the maximum of all the four directions so my max would become maximum of max and the value that is going to be returned from my dfs function finally i'll be returning max plus 1 to add 1 for the current position so this is a brute force solution for this but it would be time consuming and fail with time limit exceeded let's see whether it is passing for my basic test cases and it is if i am submitting this i get a time limit exceeded for this particular input now why do i get this because i am going to reiterate for each and every direction and go through all the path from start till end while i can reduce that time and keep that particular length somewhere by using memoization so let's go ahead and use memoization so for that we would need a matrix which would be of same dimensions as the matrix that is given to us and now with this particular thing we'll be passing our matrix itself what do we do with this matrix the memoization step is just going to be this first step that i'm going to write that if my memoization has the value for this particular i and j then i can simply return this value and not calculate it further so this simple step is going to solve my time limit exceeded problem and after that my memoization of i and j would be also equal to max plus 1 so over here i am doing nothing but returning the result if that is pre calculated and storing my calculated result for that particular index in my memoization matrix so let's run this code for the failing test case and it's giving an accepted output let's submit this and it got submitted so you can see that this little piece of memoization actually saved a lot of time for us with this the time complexity for the solution with dfs and memoization becomes o of m into n and the space complexity is also o of m into n so that's it for today guys i hope you like the video and i'll see you in another one so till then keep learning keep coding Thank you.